Hi, this is James Kingsley uh, from eLearn Brothers, and I'm going to show you how to capture the learner data from Captivate in this case, and we're going to send it off to Firebase so that we can watch it come in real time on this page uh, that we're looking at now. Um, the blog post explains some more detail about this, and uh, the goal of the video is to kind of show you what the demo is doing and then we'll take a look at the code used to get it to do that. So uh, to start with what the demo is doing, we have here a, a list of learner events that's been going on in the course and I'm going to start by launching the course. My button here. And we can see that as soon as we launched it tells me that I am Black Bear 536 and we can see now on over here it says Black Bear 536 view slide 1. And as soon as I click the Begin button, I'm going to go to slide one, and we'll see that automatically updated over here. It rolled over to my third slide, and we see that automatically updated. So what's happening here is that my code that I added to this Captivate course is sending that data to Firebase. Uh, this page that we're looking at, the live feed, is listening for changes in the data and automatically updating on there. So this is just a fun way to display the data collecting and display techniques uh, on there. Um, and we can see that uh, right now the, the latest event in the, under questions is that this person answered a question. We can see that when I answer um, a question, it's going to push that down. It's going to tell me uh, Black Bear got it correct. And the cool thing about this is it's not just updating this for me. It's updating it for anybody that's looking at this web page right now. So uh, if you were sharing this page with, you know, a thousand people, all thousand of them would have got that update just then that uh, I answered a question on there as well. So pretty cool stuff. Um, we're also tracking uh, the overall results here as well. Um, as I said, this is to demo some possibilities of what could be done. Um, if you want to learn more about it, then read some of my other blog posts or uh, come to my session that I'll be doing at the Learning Dev Camp this year. Uh, so let's jump over to the code and I'll show you how I implemented that. So all this, this is, um, I published, let me pull this over here. I published my uh, Captivate course and this is all the all the files that were spit out when I published it. and. Just for simplicity's sake for, for this demo, I'm adding all my code to the index.html file. A lot of times I would create a separate JavaScript file and then load it in there, depending on how complicated it's, the project is getting and how much I want to reuse the code and stuff. But in this case, I, I just went ahead and added it to the index.html. So this is the standard Captivate index file. And I'm going to scroll down through all the standard Captivate stuff. And then when we get to line 115, that's where I've added my code. Now it's not always going to be line 115 because um, depending on your course you could have more lines above there. Um, a downside by the way of putting it in the index file is every time you publish it's going to overwrite that file and you're going to lose all your changes there so you have to keep a backup copy of it uh, when, when you publish so that you can paste your code back in here. Uh, but yeah. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm loading the Firebase uh, JavaScript library. And when you sign up for a Firebase account, they, they give you a, a URL and you have some uh, some custom uh, keys to, to log into your database with. And then um, <clears throat> I'm setting up the interface object and event emitter object. These are all standard Captivate uh, tools. And if you check the link on the blog post, uh, I'm linking to those pages there so you can see how the, the Captivate uh, interface works there. So now let's move in. We've got our Firebase database set up here. And now we're going to start listening for events from Captivate. So on this line, I'm telling Windows to listen for an event called Module Ready Event. And that is the event that Captivate's going to fire. So when Captivate's all done, it sends a, a broadcast message out to the window and says, hey, I'm ready to go. And so we want our code to listen for that specific event. And when that event gets fired, we're going to run uh, our code 
to set up the user. In this demo case, I'm getting a random user. Uh, let me jump down to that. So in this case, I'm getting a random user from uh, this random user API, which by the way is a very cool service if you need uh, random users uh, for testing something. It generates all kinds of random user data uh, on fake users. So I'm grabbing a random user and I'm saving them into my user uh, object. And then the Captivate passed in the event um, an interface object and an event emitter object. And so I'm just storing those for later in case I need them. And then I set up a couple of other event listeners. I say, hey, um, when you hear this event, which is the slide enter event, when Captivate tells me a new slide was entered, I want you to post that slide to uh, my database. And we'll look at that function in a minute. And then I'm saying when you hear a question get submitted, then I want you to also send that to my database. And down here, this one's a little bit more complicated. I'm saying when you hear that the value of a Captivate variable has changed, then I want you to do something. And the variable that I'm listening for is the uh, total of unanswered questions. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find uh, an easy way to determine when somebody passed or failed because up until they passed the quiz, well, they failed the quiz. Um, I guess you could go at it by like checking the number of attempts or something like that. But what the method I came up with is there's a built-in variable called um, total of unanswered questions. And so when you answer one question, it deducts one from that. So if you have 10 questions and the learner answers one question, now they have nine left. So each time that they've answered a question, that variable is going to get changed. And so I'm listening to that. When that variable gets down to uh, less than zero, because Captivate's using a zero-based index, so uh, what we're listening for is negative one, which would mean that all the questions have been answered. So when it gets down to that, then we're going to get the value from Captivate of whether or not they passed, and we're also going to get their score on there. And then we send that to our database as well. Uh, this is the post slide function. And let me scroll back up there to where we first called it. That was here. Uh, that was when the uh, slide is entered. We want to post that slide information and we're passing to it these. Now, I'm only worried in this case about the slide label, which you know you and I would probably call the slide title, and the slide number. But Captivate really passes a lot of information um, in there. So I'm capturing in the function this E for event. Um, and it sends event CP data, which includes all kinds of other stuff. Like I said, uh, the blog post has a link over to Adobe's website where they talk about uh, their API and all the data that gets sent back and forth. So let me jump down to that function where we're posting that. Now the reason why I broke it out into the separate functions to putting it all in the event listener is because there's a possibility, just the way I built this demo, um, it wouldn't necessarily happen all the time, there's a possibility that we don't have that user information yet. Um, remember, I'm using this random user service so I have to make a call to that it generates a random user passes data back to me so it is possible that they're going to load the first slide before I have fake user info on there so that's why I did this so basically um, I try to uh, check and see if the user exists yet if they don't then I tell it well wait uh, 500 milliseconds it's half a second and then um, do it again and so then I just get in a little loop there where I'm waiting a half a second for each time. Probably only takes one second for it to get there, so it hits us one time probably. Then on subsequent call calls, when they get to slide two, slide three, slide four, whatever, it's just going to jump right past this and just do the post on there. And then, um, well, that's it. That's all, all the basics on there. So like I said, check out the blog post. Uh, check out some of my previous blog, blog posts on Firebase. Um, and uh, like I said, there's links for the Adobe 
uh, Captivate API and the list of variables on there. And check out my session uh, at Learning Dev Camp this summer. Thanks a lot.